Okay, so now as the iOS 16 and watchOS 9 have finally been out of the beta for a month, I can collect my thoughts on them and despite being kind of more buggy than usual, I really do think that they are the most significant updates that Apple has put out in years. So let's talk about how I utilize them and make more out of my everyday life. Let's start with the iOS first and there has been a lot of stuff that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about. So let's dive into it. But of course, first of all, we have to talk about the biggest change they made, the lock screen. So for the longest time, one of the biggest downsides of the entire Apple ecosystem was how limited the entire user experience was in terms of personalization. That's one of the fair critics that I think it's totally valid when people say about Apple. I mean, just a couple of years back, there wasn't even the app library to move away all your rarely used apps to. So you were practically forced to stare at all of your apps scattered across the different pages of your home screen. There was even a period before that where you couldn't even move them to a different place. But then the iOS 14 came out and it was the first major step in the right direction. Apple introduced widgets to the iPhone for the first time. And of course, the entire Android community was mocking it for being literally a decade late to the party. But even though they sure were late, when Apple actually decides to make something, they optimize it and make it functional so much that it instantly becomes way better than anything that competition has. Exhibit A of that was recently introduced Dynamic Island. And even though, yes, the name does sound kind of corny and funny, I cannot even begin to describe how well thought out the animations around the bill cutouts are. And hot take, in my opinion, that's one of the coolest differentiating features between the Pro and non-Pro iPhones this year. But we already know that they're probably gonna give it to the whole lineup next year. So if you don't wanna pay the Pro money for it, just wait for the regular 15. And side note, since I'm already talking about it, the regular 14 is by far the worst upgrade since the 10s, And I think you're way better off going for the 13 right now. And that's a story for a whole nother video, possibly my next one. So if you want to be the first one to see it, hit the subscribe button. So anyway, back to the point. My favorite thing about Apple widgets is how they introduced stacking one on top of the other. So you can have five or 10 of them, how much you like. And that is just the example of another feature that nobody really thought about before Apple introduced it. And that is the exact same thing they now did to the lock screen as well. You can go through different ones depending on the activity or the occasion, but the best way of using it is attaching it to different focus modes. So for instance, I love the new astronomy themes, so I use the Earth one, which follows the time of the day at my specific location. And it shows me how long I have until sunset, let's say. And when my sleep focus turns on at 9.30, the lock screen as well as the wallpaper changes to the moon one with also different widgets on it, as you can see. So during my winding down before bedtime, I can see if I completed all of my circles for the day, which I have been doing now for almost 200 days straight, by the way. It shows me when the sunrise is gonna be, and also whether or not I have the alarm set for the morning. I also finally had more spare time and started reading a lot more since I graduated just recently. So I use the reading focus mode a lot as well. And it is, as you can see, very simple with as little distractions as possible and almost all my notifications are turned off. So that is just one of the ways to help you guys make the most out of your phone use. I've also been experimenting more with these lock screens that the phone itself recommends to me, where the clock can be behind the subject and they can look really cool. So now let's talk about the second most useful feature for me, which is the new voice input while typing. Essentially, you used to be able to either type the message or convert speech to text. And it's like with almost every other innovation, when it's finally implemented, it's like obviously this is the way to go. But it didn't even occur to me how much this was actually needed. So now you can talk and type at the same time and it's all gonna be put together simultaneously. This honestly saves so much time for me and I use it even more in notes than while texting where I can just put down my thoughts whichever way I like it. So next, alongside the iPhone 14 lineup, the AirPods Pro 2 were also introduced. And they said that you can now scan your ear and the entire head shape for the best spatial audio. And to be honest, I tried using spatial audio with my first gen AirPods Pro a while back, but I didn't really like the feature. Mainly because I move my head a lot when I'm out walking or in public transportation or at the gym. So the sound would constantly move directions 
and if I keep my head in a different place for some time, then it would adjust with that as being my new front view. But when I would actually turn my head to front, the sound would be coming from the side, and then again it took a long time to readjust itself. So that was pretty annoying to me. But now you can do that same head scan with all the older AirPods that have the spatial audio as well. So pretty much every one of them except the second gen regular AirPods. So I tried it and since then I never turned off the spatial audio feature again. I'm assuming it's gonna vary from person to person, but for me now, head tracking is perfect. Instruments follow my head way faster, so it really recognizes if you're just turning your head for a second or two, or that is your new direction of looking forward. Okay, so now let's talk about the watchOS 9. First of all, as a passionate runner, this update was just what I needed. Yes, they added in which hard zone are you while running, finally, but on top of that, there's so much more very useful information about your runs, like your power output, ground contact time, stride length, and even vertical oscillations, where they used some pretty cool scanning techniques to detect it. The other incremental thing is the improved sleep tracking, which I also mentioned in my Apple Watch Series 7 review as one of the downsides of this watch, and it is great that they added it, but in my testing I found that it definitely needs more adjustments. First of all, it always underreports how long I slept for, and the day that we were filming for this video was a perfect example of that. It said that I was in bed for almost 9 hours, which I was, but only asleep for like half that time. Apart from that, it's also always saying that I woke up at least 4 or 5 times during the night, when I know that it was once or maybe sometimes not even once. What I think is happening is whenever my heart rate goes just slightly above the resting level or I move in my sleep, the watch immediately detects that as waking up. The other downside is that it still doesn't include naps, which I also had on my previous watch. Next, like with the lock screen, you can assign different watch faces to different focus modes, which I use all the time. And you can really see Apple encouraging users more and more, over the last couple of big iOS updates, to use the focus modes as much as possible, which I also really recommend you try. The biggest tip would be to make them turn on automatically. For instance, I have my fitness focus tied to the location of the gym, so as soon as I get there or start a workout, it turns on and changes the watch face. Same with sleep but it's based on time rather than the location. Now, this is a pretty minor thing for most people, but since I use the calendar app every day and organize all of my activities, this new view of the whole week on your Apple Watch is very welcome. Because for instance, I already know that the red color is for workouts or runs, the blue one is my to-do list, the orange one is lectures at my university, etc. So that is pretty much it from me for this video. Hit the like button if you found some of these tips useful and subscribe if you want to see more of my content that is coming pretty soon. Thanks for watching.